Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Wilson's April Adventures. It has been a while since my last video, but life has been so hectic, so I do apologize for being a bit laid back in regards to getting content out. But today is quite an interesting one, and it's actually related to our last video that we had posted in regards to what we used to extract those bees out of the roof. So be sure to stick around, and if you haven't subscribed by now, please do so by clicking the light subscribe and uh, button below and we would really love to have you along our journey so be sure to stick around and we will see us in the next part All right, so today i'm going to be going over the exact uh, bee vacuum that we had used to actually suck up the bees that were in that roof when we did that extraction about a couple of weeks ago and uh, I'm going to be going through with you uh, the breakdown of how we built this box, the bee vacuum, our own box. We didn't buy it. We just utilized what we had at home and it actually works very well. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys now what it looks like assembled. And then I'm going to slowly disassemble it for you so you can see exactly what we used. And I'll explain to you exactly how we used the materials we had and what we did to make the box work. So let me go ahead and show you now. All right, so that's the full kit there basically. Uh, we have got ourselves a new vacuum, a much better one. And uh, this is the box that we use to suck up the bees and this is just the, the one of the, the pipes that we use to actually suck the bees up. And the black one actually gets attached to the vacuum itself. And uh, we obviously use two pipes of the white one because that way, that way we could reach and it's more accessible to get to the bees instead of using one pipe. And yeah, so let me go ahead now. I'm going to go ahead and show you what the box looks like disassembled so you can get a better idea. And I will give you an explanation of how we put it together so that you can do the same. Alright, so let me go ahead now and show you guys how we built this box. So obviously we've got the clamps on the sides, um, on one on either side for each compartment. So there's one on there, one in the front and one at the back. And once that comes off, that's basically your base or the part in which your vacuum gets sucked into, like your vacuum sucks from here. And then yeah, that will just be your top. So your top I'll just set aside over here, onto the floor. And now, the next one, which is the netting on top, um, this is actually put onto the box, so this can't come off, right? What we used is we used drawing pins, uh, I don't know if you can see the drawing pins, the yellow drawing pin there, and a few drawing pins along this shape cloth, and then just to make sure that it's sealed, I just took silicone, normal, normal uh, white silicone, and I just siliconed it along the edge of this box to keep this, you know, nice and secure so that the bees can't escape anywhere. And uh, yeah, so this is what the top piece is. And now this is obviously where your bees get captured into. So this is where they get sucked into, into this netting. So they don't go into your vacuum at all. They're completely safe. They cannot get sucked up. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove this piece for you and just show you what's underneath this one. So beneath this one now is basically the the other pieces of this box which is your bottom and your excluder so I'll go ahead and show you now quickly this is the actual box That's all fast, yeah. So this is the box now, so you can see that on this box there is literally nothing on the bottom, it's just the mesh, it's just the just the, the shape cloth on the inside and then obviously nothing on the bottom but then there you can see your hole that's drilled for where the bees get sucked into. So the bees come into here and this is where they get caught, they get caught into this section of the vacuum. And then we have the dividing door that this is what is removable so that you can actually get the bees out of your main box once you've caught them so what we used for this is all i literally did was i took an inner an inner lid for the bees that i bought from the store and i literally just ripped off the board that was on top and i used the pine frame that was there it's already stapled it's already in position it already fits the box it just there's no need for me to now cut wood and put it all together and hopefully it stays together. It's literally stapled, it's glued, and uh, all I needed to do again was literally just cut the sizable piece of shake cloth. I placed more drawing pins in this pine piece and then I again used silicone to seal it off. And then this is what goes now onto the base, like so. 
and uh, then the, the box itself will sit on top of here. So that's the dividing door that keeps these guys into there so they don't come out. And then obviously all I did use was I used the normal lid. This is the lid that we use for our boxes with an aluminium base. This way I know the wood won't get damaged, it won't get, you know, broken or anything by anything that it's sitting on or whatever, it's pretty secure. And obviously just with the latches on either side of the door, I mean the, the base. So that's basically what the vacuum we use to, to suck up the bees from that bee removal. And it's a very simple design. There's no, there's no need to build anything, to you know straighten anything, and you don't need any crazy tools. It's, so, it's such a basic uh, design to use to actually create your own box. Um, so this is definitely a way I will recommend for anyone that wants to build your own bee vacuum. It's really not as complicated as it seems, and it's literally costs you a quarter of the price. Because if you go and try and buy a bee, bee vacuum online, you're looking at about close on to nearly 3,000 Rand just just for the box just for the box which is I think is insane and I can make you can make it yourself with a proper brood you know lid in a vase or two lids sorry I've used two lids for, to, to seal the box off and uh, an inner lid stripped inner lid to make the, the catching door it's really that easy it's, not, it's really not that complicated so yeah, this is the vacuum that we use. I'll show you now what it looks like assembled. So that's obviously the bottoms. And then there's your box, as I mentioned before. That's your box that will suck up and hold all the bees inside. And then this will just be your lid. Like so. Okay, let's go around. That is this way. That's it. Your box, your vacuum is done. And that's your vacuum. As easy as that. Like I mentioned, it works very well. All right. So with this black pipe, we had the vacuum pulling in through the top of the box, and this just makes it easier to have the vacuum provide a suction through here, as opposed to this on the side. It just makes it more workable with the design of the box, which I'll explain and show to you shortly as to why we did the hole in the top. So basically, we just took off the nozzle from the actual hose from the vacuum, and uh, all we did was we just put uh, plumbing tape around there just to thicken it up a bit. And then what you do is you literally just like rock it inside, something like that. And then there we go. And then literally all this happens. All that happens next is literally a matter of plugging that into the vacuum. You do that first, of course, and then you just put this back in. Like that. And then there we go. Now you've got your vacuum of the box, and then this will obviously get pulled through there. And then your actual exit or your sucking in valve will come over here. So this part which just for example purposes, I'm just showing you, would come over here, would fit in there, and then this is what you would use to suck up your bees. Obviously we used two, and obviously the other one would also have tape around it just to make it thicker so it stays in there nice and snug, and then obviously you'd use that to suck the bees up once the vacuum's running. So that's what we used to suck up the bees with. I will highly recommend buying a vacuum that has a variable speed, so this allows you to actually adjust the speed in which the vacuum is sucking up the bees. So obviously you gotta make sure that you don't have a vacuum that's too strong because if it's too strong, you're gonna damage the bees inside the box and on the pipe, which you don't want to do because then you're actually in essence ruining the whole colony. So what's really nice with the variable speed is that you can see by the, the suction speed that the bees are getting pulled in and you can adjust it accordingly to make sure that it's enough, it's not too much. And also the more bees you get inside the box, the stronger it has to be in order to pull. Otherwise, the vacuum won't be so, so sufficient. So you then you can adjust it a little bit more to gain more suction. 
obviously not too much because then you're going to damage the bees inside of there and the whole time there's cool fresh air going inside so the bees aren't getting too hot in there they're always getting fresh constant cool air which is nice as well and yeah so this i highly recommend the genesis vacuum obviously you can get others um, but as long as you can find one with a variable pitch i just a variable speed sorry i just find this so much more simpler because you can design a box where you can adjust the speed within the box but that just takes a whole lot more work and uh, a whole lot more things that can just go wrong so i would rather just get a vacuum itself that you can adjust the speed and that way you know there's nothing with the box you can set the speed the way you want it and the box can just be pretty straightforward and actually saves you pretty penny in the long run that's pretty much it that's the vacuum that we created and built like i said it literally costs a fraction of the price to to make it your own it works just as well the silicone keeps it sealed so that there's no leaks of suction on any part of the box and uh, also using the uh, plumbing tape around the uh, piping to go into the box also gives it a better a bit of a better seal it also reduces your loss of suction so yes man it's really a good idea to build your own it costs you literally like i said a fraction of the price and it works just as well especially if you can buy yourself a variable speed vacuum that's going to make your vacuum so much more easier to use and to build because like i said you can build a box where you can adjust the speed from the box but it just takes so much more work and it just takes much a whole lot more effort and I like to keep things easy. I don't like to keep, you know, make things challenging all the time. You want to have it a, bit, a little bit easy sometimes. And this is one way to do that. Rather buy yourself a variable speed vacuum and build your box standard and a way you can go with your own B vacuum. Simple as that. So thanks for checking it out, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope this helped a lot uh, for you to figure out a way to show you how to build your own B vacuum. And uh, if you have any comments and you'd like to know more about it, please do let me know. Comment in the, in the, in the comment section. I'd be happy to help you guys out. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys soon next time. So stay, stay safe and take care guys. See you soon.